How easy is it to switch from using Zoom to Google Meet? Let's find out. Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, along with Cookie Monster, Lord Vader, and Luke Skywalker, and if you've been following me and my daughter's toys for the last year, you know that I have dozens of tutorials about teaching and learning online with Zoom. I've been getting a lot of questions about Google Meet and Microsoft Teams as they try to compete with Zoom for dominance in the online meeting space, but I haven't had time to try them out until now. So in this video, I'll show my experience trying out Google Meet as someone who is very used to Zoom. Hopefully this will be useful if you are considering switching platforms. Let's start with starting a new meeting. So head to meet.google.com, make sure you are logged into your Google account, and then click the new meeting button. Here you get options to start an instant meeting now, create a meeting for later, or schedule a meeting in Google Calendar. I am just going to go ahead and start an instant meeting. Click that button, you get a loading screen, and it says, okay, your meeting is ready. You can add others by sharing this link. So I'm going to go ahead and share this link with a few other computers so I can have multiple people in the meeting. All right, now that I have everyone going in the meeting, let's look around for some of the common controls that you would be used to in Zoom and see how intuitive they are to find in Google Meet. One quick caveat before I do that, everything you see right now is being recorded with a third party screen recorder. So you are seeing exactly what I see on my computer desktop. This is not being recorded from within Google Meet. So I might do a future video on recording with Google Meet. I have several videos on recording with Zoom, but again, this is a third party screen recorder that you're seeing right now. So. Let's look at two of the first controls you might typically look for in a Zoom meeting, the mute buttons for your camera and microphone. Again, if you're working from home and you have family or pets or somebody running by or barking in the background, you might want to quickly be able to mute yourself or turn your camera off. Luckily, those buttons are very easy to find here at the bottom, just like they are in Zoom. Note that I already have myself muted here because I have four computers in the same room and I am trying to avoid feedback. But if you were talking, you would click this to unmute yourself. And if you need to turn your camera off, you click the button here that will turn off my video and just show my profile picture. One point in favor of Zoom here, I do have multiple microphones connected to this computer. And in Zoom, you get a little up arrow next to the mute button that will let you select a different audio source. You don't get that here. It took me a second to figure this out. If you want to select a different audio source, you need to go over to the three dot menu down here go to settings, and then this will bring up audio settings where you can change to a different microphone. So it's a few more clicks to get to that in Google Meet. Not a huge deal if you're just using a laptop with a built-in microphone or a phone, but if you're on a desktop with multiple sources, that is a little harder to find. Okay, now let's check out some of the view controls. In Zoom, you would call this gallery view where you can see everyone, and if you wanted to see one person big and everybody else smaller, we would call that speaker view. So. In Zoom, you can click to rearrange people in gallery view. I am trying to do that right now and nothing is happening. So it looks like Google Meet lacks that feature. And if I want to switch to speaker view or see one person big, how would I do that? So let's check out this button, show everyone. If I click on that, nope, nope, that didn't switch to showing everybody. Okay, how do I show one person? How about pin to my main screen? There we go. Okay, so th that pin button makes one person large and unlike Zoom, so in speaker view and Zoom, you would still get a little strip of thumbnails of everybody else across the top. And I appear to have lost that here, unless if I close this window, maybe? Nope, okay, it's just showing my own picture up in the corner, Vader here, but I have lost Luke and Cookie Monster. Maybe if I click here, nope. Okay, so not immediately clear how you can see the speaker in a large view, but still keep everybody else in tiny little thumbnails. I'm gonna try clicking a couple more buttons here, this button again. Nope, can I show people individually? No, here's the chat. I have no idea what those triangles and circles are for. We'll check that out later. Okay, so I guess this could be a good or bad thing depending on what you want. If you are a student taking an online class and you really don't care about seeing the other students, you just wanna see the teacher and maybe have a view of yourself here, then this could be fine. But if you're in more of a group meeting or something for work where you want to see the speaker big, but you also want to see your coworkers or you're taking a smaller discussion based class, then I don't really like this. It's kind of nice to be able to see everybody else. And again, I am not clear how exactly to do that unless you switch back 
So I'm going to unpin Lord Vader there, and then it brings me back to gallery view and I can see everyone. So, so since I accidentally clicked on it before, let's check out that chat feature. Here is a chat with everyone button. This pulls up a chat window over on the right, kind of similar to what you would get in Zoom, where you can type and hit enter. What I am not seeing is an option to send private chat. So in Zoom, there's a little drop down here where you can select send everyone, just send some, something to the host or send to individual participants in the meeting. And the host can enable or disable various levels of that, for example, if you don't want students talking to each other. But I do not see that option here at all. Even if I go back over to this little, what I would call kind of like the participants window in Zoom and say, try to click on somebody's name, there's no send direct message option. So I'm not clear if Gmail expects you to be using another service like through Gmail or Hangouts, or it's kind of confusing how they branded all their various chat things over the years, but I'm not seeing a way to direct message somebody in the meeting. So I'd call that another win for Zoom. Something you might've noticed if you were paying attention there, it looks like you cannot right click on people to access any controls like you can in Zoom. So I'm guessing this is because it's running in a web browser, but if you right click, you get kind of your standard web browser back forward inspect things. But in Zoom, if you did that, you would get something like mute or unmute and all of those controls for a person. So again, if you're used to Zoom, right clicking might be intuitive to manage people. If you are the host, it doesn't look like you can do that here. And it looks like you do have a control to remove somebody in a meeting, but in Zoom, there's kind of a much more granular list of options of things you can do with individual people. So like, for example, it doesn't look like I can pin or spotlight a single person for everybody else. Zoom gives the host controls to spotlight individuals for other people. And I'm seeing that I can pin people for myself, but I'm not seeing an equivalent to spotlight in Google Meet. Even if I go here to the participants menu and check this little drop down thing, the only options I get are to pin to my own screen or remove from the meeting. There's no promote to co-host or spotlight or any of the other options that you would get in Zoom. So again, simpler interface, maybe that's a good thing, but in general, this is not looking like it's anywhere near as customizable or as deep as Zoom in terms of what you can do with the different participants as a host. All right, let's check out screen sharing since that is a very popular feature if you are teaching online. It looks like in Zoom that is called present now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the present now button. It then gives me options similar to Zoom to present my entire screen, a window, or a tab in my browser. I don't think you, Zoom has that last one. So let's say I'm gonna go ahead and I just want to present a single window. I'm gonna click that and uh oh, this is interesting. It's not showing PowerPoint. So I have PowerPoint open on my computer and it's showing Camtasia, which is what I'm recording my screen with. It's showing the browser tab where I have this open and it's showing Windows Explorer. But those are the only three things it's detecting. It's not showing PowerPoint here for some reason. So that's weird. Let's cancel that. And I guess I'm gonna try sharing my entire screen. Is that gonna work? Maybe, okay, so I, I'm on two monitors here. I'm gonna select screen two, hit share. And now it's telling me I'm presenting to everyone. Okay, so I think I would be kind of duplicate presenting to everybody here. So I'm gonna drag this over to another monitor. I am on two monitors here and open my PowerPoint. And now supposedly I'm sharing my screen to everybody else. Let's go ahead and check Luke's laptop to see if I can actually see this PowerPoint on Luke's screen. Oops. Okay, yeah, there we go. So I am getting the PowerPoint that I'm sharing from this computer on all of the other screens. But I'd say that is nowhere near as intuitive as what's going on in Zoom. So in Zoom, I would get just a little collapsible toolbar up here at the top that gives me the option to stop screen sharing. But it looks like if you were on a single monitor in Google Meet, so the only way, only place I get a notification that I'm screen sharing is here in the Google Meet browser tab. But if I wanna share a PowerPoint on a single monitor, I need to minimize this. And now I only see PowerPoint. I don't really have a little collapsible toolbar like I would with Zoom. So. I'm doing this on two monitors, so I can have Google Meet open off on a second monitor, which you're not seeing, but if you were trying to screen share on a single monitor, this seems like it would be kind of confusing, so I will call that another win for Zoom. Okay, so I've stopped sharing. Let's see what other remaining options there are to play around with here. I'm going to go check this little three-dot menu down here in the bottom. So let's check the change background feature. So virtual backgrounds are something that 
people certainly had a lot of fun with in Zoom to try and lighten life up a little bit during the pandemic. So I'm going to go ahead and click the change background button. And it looks like it has a bunch of options like blurring, adding your own image, or picking one of these built-in backgrounds just like you can find in Zoom. So for example, I'm going to select a beach and it looks like this feature is pretty comparable to Zoom where it will automatically add this background behind you. So I think Zoom has some video backgrounds. I'm not seeing any video options here, but there are a bunch of different static images. Or again, you can upload your own or turn off if you wanna go back to just your regular background. So it looked like there was a whiteboard feature in there. So Zoom has a built-in whiteboard feature. Let's compare this, work up ideas together, blah, 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 start new whiteboard, creating jam. So I think this is called Google Jamboard. Oh, well, so this is a lot more complicated. It's not just immediately starting a whiteboard like it would in Zoom. It's asking me to share it with the other people in the meeting first. I believe this is because it's creating a file in Google Drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that. Oh, this opens a new browser tab. That's interesting and kind of annoying. So again, if you're on a single monitor, then you kind of have this as a separate thing in front of everybody. And uh, so now this is a kind of Microsoft Paint basic thing similar to what you would have in the Zoom whiteboard where there's a bunch of different controls here over on the left for drawing, adding shapes, erasing, adding text sticky notes, that sort of stuff. So I'm not gonna play around with this too much but that's the basic idea of how you start it. Again, it looks like this is a little different. This is integrating a separate Google service. So Jamboard is kind of like Google Dots or Google Docs or Google Sheets, that sort of thing. I believe you can start one of these totally independent of a Google Meet meeting. So they've integrated that with Google Meet here. And when you create it from within the meeting, it's gonna go ahead and create this separate document. So I have no idea where this is saved or how I would ever access it again. I'd probably have to go log into my Google Drive and check. So it looks like this is all fully functional. If you're familiar with Jamboard, maybe that's easy, but if you're used to the Zoom whiteboard, it looks like there are a few extra steps there. So I noticed two things. There's a closed caption button, so let's try turning those on. Captions have been turned on. Am I getting automatic closed captions? No, I'm not seeing anything. So supposedly I have turned captions on. Zoom has recently released live auto captioning. So I am still not getting captions on my own computer. Let's check and see if I'm getting them on Luke's. So, whoops, I'm gonna drop Luke there. Sorry, Luke. Am I getting captions here? No, I am not getting captions. So it claims that I turned on captions. I'm gonna try turning them on here too. Turn on captions. Captions have been turned on. So it's telling me captions have been turned on, but I'm not seeing the captions anywhere. Are they in the chat? You shared a file with Jam meeting? Nope. Okay, so supposedly I've turned captions on, but I have no idea what button I'm not clicking to actually make them appear. So unless I'm doing something wrong, that seems to work better in Zoom, where once the host turns on automatic captions for the meeting, then they'll just start showing up at the bottom and individual users can turn them on or off if they don't want them. But I cannot figure out how to do that here. I also noticed while clicking around that menu, there is this change layout button. So let's see what that does. Aha, auto, tiled, spotlight, or sidebar. So this is what I was missing earlier when we went into that speaker view and I wanted to see everybody else smaller over here on the side and couldn't figure out how to do that. That's what I was missing. So it looks like we've got a few different options there. Let's see, if auto. Who knows what auto is? So maybe when I switch to pinning somebody, it's just gonna kind of automatically do its thing. And this is weird. It still, it still thinks I have captions on, but it's just not showing anything at the bottom here. So I'm gonna turn that off again to get my full screen size back here. So it, you can let it do its thing with auto. You can select tiled. So that's the equivalent of Zoom's gallery view where you see everybody the same size. You can select spotlight which is just gonna show one person big. So that's the equivalent of Zoom's, sort of the equivalent of Zoom's speaker view, but the true equivalent of Zoom's speaker view is what they call sidebar here, where you see the other people smaller over on the side. So I guess those options do all exist. They are just a little more buried. So in Zoom, you just get one little button in the upper right that lets you quickly switch between views. So it's one extra click here to click that menu and then click change layout. So I was wrong earlier in the video. I'll go back and add some text to clarify that. You can have some customization there, but again, you can't drag to rearrange people. And as the host, it doesn't look like I can spotlight people. So there aren't quite as many controls as you get in Zoom. 
So what's the verdict there? I'd say it depends. There isn't going to be one that is always better than the other. It depends on what you need. So clearly I'm biased because I have been using Zoom for a long time and I am much more familiar with it, but it definitely seems like Google Meet is not as highly customizable. So if you are experienced teaching online and you want to use all of those advanced features in Zoom, you might not be able to replicate them in Google Meet. On the other hand, I've definitely heard from people and gotten comments in my videos who just get confused by all of the different advanced settings in Zoom and getting buried in whether you're in side-by-side -side mode or full screen and what exactly your students see when you're sharing your screen and all of that. So it does look like if you just want to start a meeting where you can see and talk to other people and you don't care about any of that or all the different views, that Google Meet might be simpler. Another thing is to compare the pricing tiers and the things available at each level between Zoom and Google Meet. So I'm not going to read through all of these tables for you, especially because these might change over time as they add new features or change their pricing. So this might part of the video might become outdated in the future. One quick thing I note now is that the free tier of Google Meet does have a slightly longer meeting limit. So it's up to one hour, whereas the free tier of Zoom only gets you 40 minutes, which isn't quite enough if you're doing something like a 45 or 55 minute class that's a little annoying. So Google Meet will get you a little longer, but it is missing a bunch of features that I do believe come with the free tier of Zoom. So things like raising your hands, polls and Q&A and breakout room. All of that stuff you can get for free in Zoom, but it looks like if you want those in Google Meet, you will have to pay for them. So that is it for now. If you have a question or a correction, especially if you notice something I got wrong in this video, since this is my first time using Google Meet, please go ahead and post it in the comments below. And hopefully if I have time, I will make more Google Meet tutorials or check out Microsoft Teams in the future. So if you have a request for another tutorial, again, please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. Thank you.